This video explains how change propagation works. If you haven't watched how virtual DOM diffing works, it's helpful to watch that video to understand the concepts in this video. The example app we will be using shows a filtered list of completed to-dos from a source list of all to-dos. We'll be changing skip to complete and want the completed list and the DOM to update accordingly. On an extremely high level, when a change happens, change propagation avoids refiltering the entire source list by maintaining a derived list and updating it when the source list is changed. On a slightly lower level, change propagation works by maintaining two binary trees. The first tree is the result of calling the filter function for each item. It stores the returned true or false results. This is the predicate tree. The second is a tree that contains the derived result. In this case, the list of completed to-dos. When the source list changes, we update that item's filter result in the predicate result tree. Next, we add or remove nodes in the derived result tree using positioning information in the predicate tree. Finally, when we modified the derived result tree, we know exactly the right index in which to update the DOM. The predicate and derive trees are actually red-black binary trees. Binary trees are a lot like lists. They're key value stores and they're sorted by their keys. In our case, the keys are actually the indexes of the items in our list. The most important thing red-black trees provide is logarithmic inserts, reads, and deletions. They do this by coloring each inserted node red or black to maintain a semi-balanced tree. Let's see what it looks like to insert three items in a red-black binary tree, hop, skip, and jump. The first inserted item, hop, will become the root node. As we insert other items, they compare the keys, in this case the indices, of the two items. If the new item's key is higher, it goes to the right. So skip goes to the right and is given a color. When other items are added, they will be inserted in a similar way. Jump should go after hop and skip. However, the coloring rules are now violated. So the red-black tree is rotated, maintaining our tree's balance and fast updates and reads. Okay, so let's put this all together. We have our source list of to-dos, the predicate and derived trees, and the resulting DOM. In the bottom right, we'll track a theoretical cost of each operation. We'll say that changes in object land cost one unit, while DOM changes cost 10 units. Let's break down the trees a bit more. First is the predicate tree. A predicate is the function used to filter items. The predicate tree keeps the result of calling the filter function for each item in to-dos. That's why true and false are saved on each node. The second tree is the derived tree. It contains nodes only for items that pass the predicate function. In this case, it contains nodes for only the completed to-dos. The derived tree is sorted by the order of items in the predicate tree. In fact, the keys of items in the derived tree are the indices of the items in the predicate tree. This is the most complex part of the algorithm. Notice that jump in the derived tree is the second item, but if skip gets added, jump needs to become the third item in the derived tree. To enable derived nodes to look up their index, each derived node has a reference to their sister node in the predicate tree. This is what the asterisk symbolizes. Finally, to quickly calculate the index of any node within its own tree, we store a left count, right count, and gap count on every node. All right, so let's update skip to complete and see what happens. When skip is marked as complete, the predicate node observes that change and updates its value. 
now that the predicate value is true, its sister node needs to be inserted into the derived tree. To insert in the derived list, we need to compare the indexes of skip and hop in the to-dos list. To find skip's index, we use skip in the predicate tree to calculate it. We do the same thing with hop, looking up hop's sister node in the predicate tree and calculating hop's index. Once we have both indices, we know that skip should be inserted to the right of hop and move to the next node in the derived tree. We repeat this process by calculating jump's index. To calculate jump, we actually have to read the skip node in the predicate tree. In a red-black tree, calculating an index for a given node takes logarithmic time. With the index of jump, we insert skip to the left of jump, which rotates the tree into its final position. Since we know the location of where skip was inserted within the derived list, we can render just skip and insert it into the DOM at the right place. Change propagation is a logarithmic squared algorithm. Inserting a node into the derived tree takes logarithmic steps, but at each step of the insertion, a logarithmic index lookup needs to be performed. While logarithmic squared isn't as fast as logarithmic, it's far faster than linear algorithms running on even modest data sets.